Okay, with Renaissance, going green saves you money. <laughs> okay, today we're going to look at the four pole junior kit here. And this is the first one actually ever made. And um, the rotor's a little bit smaller in this one, but that's okay. Um, we'll go over some details here. Uh, the magnets here are the Briggs and Stratton magnets, they're just two double stacked. Uh, there's just a piece of aluminum there because this rotor was made a little bit differently. <clears throat> uh, let's go over some real basics here. We're going to run this at 36 volts. It can be run up to over 100 volts, probably about 150 volts, if you're very careful. Um, so again, the batteries are in series with each other. I apologize for the mess of wires here, but we're having to do a quick job here. Um, so we've got 36 volts powering the system in series. Um, the batteries are in series with each other. And this is another 36 volts charging. There's the three terminals here. Um, see it. These are the output secondary batteries. These are the input primary batteries. Um, we're going to say 12 to 24 or 48 volts on this. Um, otherwise you have to remove the neon bulbs on here. Otherwise, they'll stop blowing up on you. Um, what we're going to look at here, really quickly, is um, you have four coils, and we've advanced or retarded actually the trigger uh, master coil, which goes to this board here. We have one less transistor because it's being used as a trigger wire right here, going to the negative as well as to the trigger pot, and powering all the base resistors, as you can see along here. Um, what we have is 5 ohm resistors, and uh, right now I have 22 ohm on the branch resistors, as we call them, in one big pot here, 1,000 ohm pot. And um, with the advancing of this coil here, as you can see the holes, um, normally you have three um, holes for the coil holder, but since we're moving it in that direction, there's only there's only space to put. You know, so there's the other hole right here. So we've moved it over, and that means it has more torque to it. Um, so we've got a little coil here for the LEDs, and we could power a lot more LEDs, but we're just powering some on the front plate here. Um, okay, so the starting batteries voltages. 37.2, 36.4 on the charging batteries. Um, we're not going to try and run this for any long period of time. We're just going to get it started to show you how it can run. So we can adjust this pot. Downward would mean um, the lowest resistance to get it started. Get it up to speed. And then we'll back off once it gets up to speed. Now we can see the amp meter here it is only pushing 2.5 amps. Now I can make it push more, but see now we're pushing 5 amps. These wires aren't really rated for that. But you can see the voltage up here is 40 volts, 32 over there. So I'm going to back off a little bit, and it's going to speed up quite a bit. So you can see, again, the LEDs lighting up nice. And the charging rate, since we backed off a little bit, come down a little bit. So these are the four switches. That's the master coil right here. So we can adjust the sweet spot here. You can still see that I can go up higher. So what we want to do is make sure um, that our temperatures are okay. 
on the base resistors, on the transistors. You can see they're at room temperature. It's 67 in here. Six, huh. um, and then, of course, these what we call branch resistors. Let's see, they don't get too hot, and the pot itself can get hot if you don't have a big enough pot. Um, you can see it's starting to get warm at least. Um, we like to use these other bigger resistors instead of a pot, but this is convenient. Um, and even the wire connections themselves, this is relatively small wire, but we're only pushing, you know, 2 to 5 amps. Right now, 3.75. You can see we're charging these batteries and start to off gas if I bring them up too high. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I had a lot. I have a lot more torque here um, with this primary coil right here um, positioned. Um, the idea is, and what we're going to do is turn it off to show you this. Now I have it turned off, and I'm just stopping it. Um, so what you can see here is the difference between when it actually turns on. Um, see, normally, if this was the primary coil, the transistors would trigger right about there. It would, it would turn the transistor on because the amount of magnetism in there will, um, will provide enough voltage to turn on the transistors a little bit earlier than we want to. So you're actually firing in to the rotor itself. So actually we want to go right about there. So, so if you look at where this is positioned right now, um, by the time this reaches the magnet reaches the um, the pole piece on the other magnets on the other coils I should say you're already positioned where you want to fire you want to fire right there bang and keep firing till about there so that's exactly the way this is set up so now I can't actually I can only go in this direction I can't go in the other direction I have to go counterclockwise to start it up. Otherwise, we'll see here what happens when I go clockwise. There's no power there. But if I go in the other direction, it starts right up. There's a whole lot more power. So this is the basic... Uh, what we call the window motor junior, because the senior has a bigger, wider rotor and 18 gauge wire. Um, so it's got double the power at least than this. It's got a bigger shaft. And, um, and that's that. You guys have any questions about this model here? Yeah, the neon bulbs can be lit, and you know these batteries are really not the size. Even though the the primary batteries are okay in size, being 12 amp hour batteries, the secondary batteries need to be really a lot bigger, or you could have bigger batteries and charge more. Um, so right now, what's happening is they're already at 40 volts. Um, under charge, and therefore they are um, the neon bulbs are coming on because they don't really see too much of a load. As you get to the higher voltages, they'll just come on anyway. Um, so after 24 volts, really they're going to be coming on more or less on how hard you're pushing it. So if I come, if I back off this trigger resistance here. Eventually they might go off. Yeah, see now they're going to turn off because there's not too much power there. So, um, 
So yeah, I mean, after 36 volts, you really don't need them. They can be a problem. Because if they blow out, they can arc together, and they can create a dead short. Yeah, that's what we usually do. When we assemble the boards for people, we put resistor in series, um, like 4.7K ohm resistance. And that way you're not going to burn out those neon bulbs as fast. Um, but yeah, if you try and do that without it, they'll probably blow up pretty quickly. So again, we're charging at a rate of 6 amps, or, or actually that's the input, 6 amps input, which is pretty high. So now I backed off the resistance and sped up further. Now we're down to 5 amps input. Now speed isn't necessarily, high speed isn't necessarily meaning the sweet spot, um, but it is helpful to get it up to speed um, so what happens is you have to drop the resistance on the final resistor here to get it up to speed frequently otherwise it might take a while to get up to speed or it might never get up there especially if you have a load on it so it's nice to put um, a lower resistance you may either as several switches here you could switch one low resistance and wait till it gets up to speed and then uh, turn that one off and turn another switch on powering another set of resistors. Yeah, but you'd have to have, like these switches right here aren't really big enough. Those are only 3 amp switches. If you're doing a 50 watt um, resistor like I provided in the kits, then um, you want to have a little bit bigger switch than that if you're going to do that. Or you just use a wire clip if you want to do that. Yeah, it, it really, it's just a variable. Um, uh, it, it, it allows uh, for variation in the battery, of the charging battery. As the battery charges, and as the input battery discharges, it changes um, your setting, so that bulb keeps it a little bit more stable, like a servo. So it just sort of adjusts it a little bit. And it's not about the brightness. If you don't have very much of resistance in the circuit, that bulb will light up brighter. You know, or you get a smaller bulb, whatever. We just provided a strong enough bulb to handle whatever you're doing. Like if you're going to go up to really high voltages. Then you know you're gonna you're gonna see that bulb come on more than what it is right now. So this is going pretty fast here. And there's there's a good bit of power on that. Yeah, definitely. See, now we're only at 4 amps input, 29 volts, and there's quite a bit of power there. A lot more than if I hadn't advanced this coil here. So the same thing applies with the 10 coiler. At the bottom, there's a little bit of adjustment, and you can feel it. You know, just leave it kind of loose in your hand, slightly loose, and then you just sort of feel it. Move it back and forth either way. And then keep your starting rotation always in the same direction, like this one's counterclockwise. So if you move the coil in the other direction, see this one I could only go downward because I have this little coil in the way. I could have done it upward, but I would have to put, position that somewhere else. Yeah, so now watch. I can push these. So adjusting this, these rods will make it come on more or less. But actually what's happening with this is this is actually taking some of the energy from this coil right here. Not even so much from the magnet. 
So that's why when I moved this up and down, it didn't really make too much of a difference. Um, so we don't want to get this too much brighter. Those bulbs will blow out if it goes any faster. So I could put a whole bunch more of these strips on here, but I'm not going to. I've run out of time. I just got them off of eBay. So again, we're going to turn this off now. So those turn off each coil. Each one of these wires goes to the board. So now you can see the batteries are coming back, stabilizing a bit. So the, this one will bounce back up. And this one will come back down a little bit. Well then if I got oh, yeah. some kind of a small little generator to put on the shaft there, and that would be of some benefit, would it? Yeah. 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 I mean, this is not a high motor. Um, this is not like the window motor that we have. Well, it depends on what you do, really. I mean, um, like I said, advancing this coil right here is going to make it a little bit more powerful, um, depending on the magnet arrangement and so forth. Um, the long, the, how long the on time is, for example, you know, with this one, it's, it's more like the 23, like he was saying. Well, then putting a mechanical motor here to, to a small extent won't uh, uh, detract from the charging. No, it won't. In fact, as you load it down, it draws less and can charge more. Again, there's a mechanical um, sweet spot as well as, um, you know, the, the regular tuning of the system is through the trigger resistance and the gaps. The gaps right here between the coils and the rotor. Um, so you can see this one's off. Um, so as you change those gaps a little bit, you're going to have that's part of the tuning, and um, and then the base resistors, all the different resistances, will change uh, along with your voltage. Should the gaps ideally be all the same? Yeah, ideally. This one isn't exactly perfect. <laughs> um, it's not, the gaps aren't as critical, depending on these magnets, you want to get them pretty much as close as possible, like an eighth of an inch is good if you get them. This particular rotor was an experiment, and so we made it smaller than the normal one, so I can't even get them any closer. But with the normal kit, you can get it right up to the rotor. Yeah, that's so, like the 10 coiler to get as close as possible. Yeah, you can get the 10 coiler can actually hit if it comes close enough. Um, so you can see the uh, the batteries have charged um, up some, and this one has discharged some. Um, they're still coming back um, to their position initially. Um, but the idea, again, is to have bigger batteries charging up. Um, so I think that's it. I think we'll end this video here.